Now, what we've been learning is in first in this part of ten is how you act. Okay, how how are you acting? Uh, you know the truth. Uh, you know uh, what's pagan and what uh, what is it? You know false religion. I I could I could stand up here and I could I could preach to you false uh, false religion stuff out of context stuff that isn't in the scripture, and I can guarantee you the eyes would be going, wouldn't they? Your faces, I could see your faces. If I started saying to you right now, you could lose your salvation, and I started preaching that, by the end of the time I'm done, most likely in this church, most people won't be here. They'd get up and walk out, and I'll tell you what, I, 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 I wouldn't blame you. If somebody's going to tell you you're going to lose something that God gave you, mm. I'd be upset. It's time to leave. I wouldn't be mean about it. I wouldn't say get up and make a see, just I gotta go. I gotta go. Why? Well, if I, I had anything that I could do to keep my salvation, I'd lose it in a minute. I lost it five times this morning. What I mean, think about it. They always tell you you can lose your salvation, but they don't tell you how far you can go. And then you'll lose it. I mean, at what point did I lose it? Did I lose it this morning when I got up and I, I said had bad thoughts in my head and walked over to the mirror? At what point did I lose it? I, I, I tell you, I'm, I'd be so frantic. You can see it in me. I'm, I'd be so frantic. Look at me. Imagine if I could lose my salvation, a guy like me. I mean, I tell you, I'd be a chain smoker. I'd be walking around. Ah, when did I lose it? I don't know. Oh, where's, what's happening here? I could have never been at the Exodus at the pe first Passover. The angel's going to come by at 12 o'clock. It's not here yet. I can't believe it. 1201 is here, is here, is here. I'd be like that. Why? You know how I am. I mean, it's nothing that you guys don't see already. You can tell it in my preaching. What's that? He's nuts. <laughs> I mean, I, I watch preachers every... That's what I watch on, TV, on, on YouTube. I watch preachers all day. I got to tell you, this is what I see most of the time. All right, let's turn to this. And they go down the line and they go, there's me. I'm like out there, up here, over here. I'm about to sit down with you guys. Why? Because I'm nuts. <laughs> That's why. I'm just very excited. I, oh, I like these things. I, I, get, I learned something in the Bible and uh, I got to get up and tell somebody. I'm right away, I'm, I'm, Larry, i got to talk to you right now. He's like, oh, somebody died. No, i got to tell you what I read in the Bible. That's what And I'm telling him what's, what's, what I've just read in the Bible. God showed me this. Do I call you up all the time? Hey, i gotta, I got to talk to you. Somebody, God showed me this. <laughs> See, i got Yvonne. She's, she's like sitting in a chair. i got her already. <laughs> you know, she can't get away. I'm on the <laughs> Does she answer your phone? Oh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Used to jump on the pews, but I don't chairs. <laughs> Remember? Yeah, I used to get on the pews and stuff like. I had to stop because it was intimidating people. I'd be like, I'd be like, you know, get so excited when I first started preaching. I was just happy to preach. I jump up on the, I jump up and start preaching from the pews and stuff like that on top of them. And I, and then I realized everybody was like this. <laughs> I said, I got to stop this. <laughs> but here we are in First Corinthians chapter ten, and what he's saying is. Uh, what, what we're talking about today is now you're, you're all there. You're, you're getting mature. Okay, you're getting mature. How are you supposed to act when you get, when, now that you're mature? Look, uh, you guys are the remnant. It, it, no matter where you go, from here, probably down to Watertown Baptist Temple or up to Messina, it, you know more Bible than probably everybody in between. No doubt. I could put you up against anybody. Why? Because you're learning the true Bible. Amen? You guys, are, you guys are so far ahead. Plus, you got that brokenheartedness that you don't get in religion. We're softening you. This is softening you up, chapter 10. What's that? So that you don't go into somebody's house and they got an angel on top of their tree and there you are reaching for it, smashing it against the wall. You say, does that happen? Yeah, it happens in my house. Look, I'm the guy jumping on the pews. I'm the weirdo. Okay? These things do happen. If you invite me and Yvonne to your house, if, if you would have let us go, Yvonne and I are hanging from your chandeliers, ruining everything, destroying your tree, knocking it down. This is all pagan! That's where we used to be. Now we don't. But we, do. we were like that. 
Why? Because just like you, we got a little bit of truth in us, and we got crazy. Amen? And don't think it can happen to the, the most frail people. The most frail people. The most people who are really soft-hearted soft -hearted can do it. Right, Mary? We can all do it. Amen? We can all not realize that we're actually offending people that we don't have to offend. I'm not talking about snowflakes. I'm talking about people that we actually, that are actually like, that are, that are nice people. Okay? And that's what he's dealing with right here with this. And he's trying to say, you need to be a little bit more mature with this. Uh, look at, we're going to start in verse number 12. Let's stand for the word of God. And he was talking about being examples of things, but then he says in verse number, excuse me, verse 22, he says, Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you eat, asking no quest question for conscience sake. But if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that, sh that, that showed it, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Well, let's pray right there. Father, thank you, Lord God. We ask you to bless this time. Bless, bless our hearts, Lord Father. We're going to need it. Uh, we, need, we have the holidays coming up, Lord Father, and we have a tendency to get uh, zealous about things, Lord. And, and I would thank you, Lord, for helping us out at that time and, and bringing this message in just before it starts. Thank you, Lord, and I love you. Put the preacher out of the way and speak to the people in Jesus' name. Amen. So you can see, sit down. Rose, sit down, please, sit down. You can see just by the way that sets it up that Paul's saying, look, you, you've got to be responsible here. You have to be responsible here. And and the first thing he takes, it, takes into account, he says, um, do we provoke the Lord's the Lord to jealousy? Now I, I got to tell you something. Don't do this. Okay. What he said. What 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 do you provoke? He's a jealous God. But where is he jealous at? When you pick another God. Above him. Yeah. When you put something above the Lord, that's where he's going to have the problem. Okay. He's a jealous God. Uh, 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 he's looking at you're going to meet people in this world, and they're not going to believe just like you. Okay. Some people. They have a they have a belief, and we see it. We're going to see it this this uh, this time. There's a there's this guy in a red suit and everything else, and he's drunk or whatever, and he's got a red nose, and he's going to break into your house, and he's going to put gifts underneath this thing, this tree you got there, and everything else, and then he's going to leave, and and uh, and you know, and look, we understand what it is. We understand folklore. We understand these things. Uh, I I don't have any kids, so I can be blunt with you. Understand? The word Santa. Okay, just move the words. Just move the letters around. What do you got? Satan. Okay, you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, if if you were to turn around and use it like that, yeah, we'd have a problem, okay? I don't want anybody, I'm leaving that church. He doesn't want us to celebrate Christmas. I didn't say that. What I'm saying is if you're going to take it like folklore, take it like folklore. Don't put it to your heart. This is the way things are. Amen? You know the truth. You know the truth. Okay? You know the truth. If you, but I'm going to tell you, I'm not coming to your house and telling you how to treat your kids or teach your kids or anything like that. If you want to play that stuff or you want to do that stuff or whatever, go ahead, do it. It's, it's not going to, you got to understand, it's not going to hurt me. I'm going home, be with my wife. Amen? My wife does it, does a, she lights up a cross. She does those lights. You see them outside our house right now. I got to tell you something, most of that, I love them. Because you know how many times I've missed my driveway? <laughs> 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 
So I don't have any problem with those things. But that's, my wife likes to do that. Now, if it was up to me, there's no lights out there whatsoever. Why? I got an electric bill to deal with. Yeah, but then you did it with an I I, I got to tell you, in my, the way I am, okay, I'm a, if I, when we had a farmhouse, we had people living in there, you, you know, we brought people in, we, had, we fostered kids, we did everything. We had a house full of people, okay? Now, with a house full of people, uh, I could be out in the barn and shoveling or something like that, dealing with the horses. And let me tell you something, there could be bombs going off over at Fort Drum loud and we could have thunder and lightning, but boy oh boy, if somebody actually just touches that heater and moves that temperature up, I'd be like out there and all of a sudden, <laughs> Or the kids, they, they actually, our kids used to call me the electricity Nazi. I'd be walking, hey, why'd you leave this light on, this light on, that light on? That's me, okay? That's how I am, but you know, now my wife wants to do it, and she likes this stuff, and we're alone, and I, I, I'm afraid of her, and, and I'm not going <laughs> to, hey man, I just helped Larry out a little, okay, <coughs> but he says, you know this stuff, and, and, and you're not, you're, you have liberty, look, uh, there's in the Bible, there's a liberty here. Uh, you know what's right and you have a liberty, but the liberty is to do what's right. You don't have liberty to do what's wrong. You have liberty to do what's right. I watch this in the church house and everybody thinks, I have a liberty to do this, I have a, li I have a liberty to worship the way I want. No, you don't. You have a liberty to worship God the way He wants. Amen? Amen. That's the difference. You don't have a liberty. And look, that's what the world's doing. They, this, this new... This new faith religion type stuff is let me worship God. I, I want Burger King. Why? Because I can have it my way. That's what they want. They want worship their way. What? You can't see it, people? Look, there's people down south picking up snakes. We're all around snakes and stuff. You, you think God's sitting there going, yes, we're all another one. Think about that. Is that what you think God's doing? Because I'd like to see the verse. Okay, uh, we have people that do all kinds of crazy things out there. Crazy things, and they're doing it in the name of Jesus, people. That's the hard thing. They're doing it in the name of Jesus. And we know, man, it's wrong, but it, I'm not going in somebody's house and start beating them up. They're learning, they're learning, what you do is you fill them up with enough truth that they see these things, and they start to see it. And they start to see the world. When you got saved, you know, you start to look at the world a little differently. And as you got grounded in the Word of God, you know what you did? You started to look at the Word a lot differently, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And the more truth that you get in you, the more stuff you see and you're sitting there going, wow, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie. The more truth you get, the more lies you'll find. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right, Brother Bruce? You'll know. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's basically been saying about talking to us about here. Uh, he says, now watch, he says in verse 23, he says, all things are lawful for me. It's not against the law for me to do this. He says, but all things are not expedient. Okay, all things, hey, look, I got some liberty here, and this is the right thing to do. Uh, this is idolatry, this is bad stuff. But is it expedient for you to go in their house and start tearing it apart? Is it expedient for you to go in there and just start preaching to people inside their house? No, because the guy's going to say, well, get out. Mm -hmm. Not to mention you're losing people. We're supposed to be winning them. Okay, here's how I think of it. You guys all came in here, and I've been preaching. How many of you have I've come into your house and said, get rid of this, get rid of this? None of you, right? Except for maybe your barn. <laughs> but uh, what I'm looking at is, it's not expedient for me to do that. What I'm looking at is, I'm going to fill you up with the Word of God, and I'm going to know how spiritual you are in your life by how you act after that. I, I, look, I can't come in here and just tell you, hey, look, you got saved now, Rose. You better have a skirt and a dress on, and you better do this, and you better do that, and carry your Bible everywhere you go. And guess what? We'll be praying for it if you show up to church. How many people have heard this one in the uh, independent Bible sectors here? 
Hey, look, I'm going to tell you something. All they care about is you showing up to church most of the time. Amen? Yeah, it's true. Okay, just keep coming. Look, you, everybody's, got, everybody's got other things to do. You know, sometimes there's families and a guy only has one day a week. One day a week and he's got a family. Okay? And, and then you got a preacher beating him up for it. Man, sometimes just when you have one day a week and you got a family and stuff like that, you got to turn around and he wants to take, I want to take my family out and have a picnic and everything else. You know what I say? Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, I'll tell you this. You'll make it a habit. You'll make it a habit so long that missing church will become a habit. Amen. If it's not important, it, it'll just go to the side. You know, you'll, you'll start putting a price tag on God. You know what price tags are? Young fat price tags. Here's a price tag. Uh, well, Sunday's coming, but there's a birthday over at this guy's house. And there'll be a, believe me, there'll be a birthday party every other week. You know what you did? You took, you turn around. Hey, I, I'm going to tell you something. My family turns around and says, guess what? Sunday we're going to have a dinner and we're going to have it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon or we're going to have it at 12. Okay? Guess who's not at the, guess who's not there? I'm not there. They couldn't have, they couldn't have the respect to know what I'm doing at 10, 10 o'clock to 12 or 10 o'clock to 12.30, they're not really a good family to me, are they? Right. They can have it on their own. I'll be there later. Okay? They, You know, that's the difference. I, I, I mean, uh, I'll, go to your, I'll go to your little thing. Uh, Yvonne, she goes to, she'll go to family functions on Sunday. But you know what? At 5 o'clock, she's back home. Why? Because she's going to church. They understand that. They're not dumb, believe me. They know where she's at on Sundays. And that's where most of you, I got to go here. Uh, okay, well, I'll come afterwards. Uh, my sisters, they had, a, they had a wedding for their son. I had to go all the way down there. They were telling me, you got to come all the way down to Virginia for a wedding and stuff like that. I said, okay. So I said, what time's the wedding? She said, 10 o'clock. I said, I can't be there. She said, why? I said, I got a church at 10 o'clock. So they turn around and change the whole wedding to 2 o'clock. Now I said, okay. I had no choice. I was trying to get out of going all the way down to Virginia, you know, to tell you the truth. But as soon as they did that, I said, okay. I went down there. I, I went to the wedding for my nephew. And you know what? I went to church. And then I went. They had everything afterwards. And, you know, I, I actually appreciated what they had done for me. And went back and actually said something to them. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Remember that. What's that? Just because you won doesn't mean you don't thank. Right, amen. Be amen. thankful. And, and just so you know, you're not just thanking them. Who are you thanking? God that provided a way for you. Amen. amen. That's, the, that's the big one. Now, let's look a little more into this. He says, uh, he says, what's the way? He says uh, all things. And, and then he says, let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. You've got to look, look towards other people right there. He's not talking about the money, their wealth, their... You're looking at the welfare of them. Uh, I, I, look, I don't go into I go into Rod's house and or I go into a business. I don't turn around and make the place a mess and leave. I get them all all worked up and I walk out of there. I gotta try that one. But it won't work. You, you understand what I'm saying with that? Okay. And that's where you, you look towards the other guy. Yeah. Uh, you want to go into some some place and just say, uh, uh, just say somebody like Bruce. He got a problem with that guy. He's going in there and he's going to have an argument with him. And then he walks in. And you know what? All the work, everybody's around and he's got family all around and everything else. And and you know, inside of Bruce, it says this: Bruce, you need don't say it. Be quiet. Be quiet. Why? Because either he can do that and he can lose thirty people. And possibly, but most likely, not gain the one where he can have a chance to talk to 30 people sometime. Amen? You have to look for the other's wealth. Then, he says, whatsoever is sold. He's going to give you a, a, a shambles. See the word shambles? Mm -hmm. Whatsoever is sold. There's a business transaction where in the shambles... And, they, and it says that eat. So it's a place you can eat. So what do you think the shambles is? It's a marketplace. Amen? It defines itself. Okay? 
He says, whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat asking no question for conscience sake. Uh, you go into somebody, you go into a Roman Catholic's house, they turn around, they say, hey, eat some, eat, eat a chicken salad sandwich with me. Oh, okay. What is put before you eat? Go ahead, it's okay. Why? Well, you, the, the earth, it's provided by the Lord. So eat it, go ahead. Okay, thank God for it and eat it, is what he's saying. He says now, he says, uh, verse number 27, if any of them that believe not, watch, these are people that don't believe like you. They bid you to a feast. Come over to the house. We're having a little get-together. And ye be disposed to go. I don't have anything else that day. Okay, I'm going to head over there. He says, whatever is set before you, eat. Asking no questions. Now, but if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols. Now, Lot, eat not for whose sake? His sake. Wait a second. But, but he's the guy that cooked it. Why are you doing it for his sake? You, you don't, look, he's, he's turned around. It's like you go into a place and you're going to go uh, eat a dinner and all of a sudden they start bringing out some statues and everything. And, and they go, okay, well, we're going to eat in honor of our blessed mother thing or whatever. You know what he says? Don't you eat it. Because what you're doing is you're justifying their obedience to an idol. Mm -hmm. And it's for their sake. What's that? What? No, I can't now. You can either just, uh, just no, just no, no, and you do it for their sake. Now, if they want to take you aside or they want to make fun of you or mock you, maybe you're going to have to say it to them. Look, it was uh, everything was great until you did that thing over there. And now I'm out the door. Okay, but look, this Christmas, if they put have holly out there and the red things and all that stuff and and have the Santa Clausy cookies and all that stuff. You like them, eat them. <laughs> They're good. I'm not giving up cookies just because they got a they got a guy with a little thing up there. I like cookies too much to give them away. Everybody understands that. Amen. Okay, that's what he's saying. It's when the person comes out and want to do something like, okay, everybody sit down and and guess what? We're going to go over this ritual that we have, and they start. Go I'm not doing that. I'm not worshiping your idol. I'm not worshiping your religion. Amen? Amen? We don't do those things. We're not worshiping those things. Amen. Okay? So he said, that's what he's trying to say. Don't for his sake. Eat not for his sake that which showed you. What showed it. And for conscience sake. Why? Because also you have a Lord and he wouldn't like you to worship another God. Amen. This is easy stuff, isn't it? Well, I don't see why I, I don't see why I have to beat this into you, Miss Adrian. You should know where it's all that. Amen. Now, let's stay with it. He says, verse 29, he says, conscience, I say. What's that? Not your own. Not your conscience, for their conscience. He's talking about. He says, but of the other, the other person. For why is my liberty judged? of another man's conscience. Why is this? For if I, uh, if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Okay? Why, if I'm a partaker and I'm partaking, I'm, I, I know that it's not, there's no God. I know there's only one God. I know this. Okay? Why would it, why would it be a trouble? I know it in my heart. Well, I'm in this place and I got Isaac with me. And I'm okay. I know it's not God. But Isaac, you just got saved a little while ago. And, and he could have a stumbling there. And I got to look out for Isaac. Why? Because he's a disciple. He's discipling. I don't want to mess him up. Because guess what? He's going to have a lot of questions when, when it's over, isn't he? He's going to know what's going on. What are you doing this for? Why did you do this? And I might have heard him. And then Isaac walks out and says, that's it. I'm done with him. And then the next thing you know, he's out in the world. Why? Because there's too, more, too many hypocrites in the church. Yeah. You know, most of you that, that were out of church for a long time said in your heart, there's too many hypocrites in the church. You know what the worst part about that is? On the... On the 
the stage of a Christian side, you needed to go into your mirror in the morning and say in the morning, look at that person in the a mirror. There's too many hypocrites in the mirror. We're all hypocrites. I'm preaching a message that I cannot achieve every week. Imagine me telling you how righteous you should be and then you see my closet. Man, I got my bones just falling all over it. You know, they're coming out. Uh, the only thing I got good is my wife's such a worker. She's pushing them back in with the broom, and I'm happy about that. But man, oh man, what kind of hypocrite am I? <laughs> and he's, he's bringing this out. He says, I've been evil spoken of uh, that which I gave thanks for. Now watch, whether therefore you eat. Or you drink, or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all uh, to the glory of God. I mean, get them, get that pack out, and, and say, "Thank God for the cigarette." Amen. That's what he's looking at. He says, "Can you glory for? Be, can you give glory to God for these things?" I'm not just picking on cigarettes, okay? I could care less at the time. But what I'm saying is, you, you don't hear many people. You don't hear many people that are glorifying God off. Hey, uh, uh, get get a Jack Daniels out, pour a few shots, and we're all going to sit around and put them in a line. Everybody gets one, and we're going to say we're going to say a prayer before we do it and glorify God. We'll sing a hymn. How's that work out? If you can't do it to the glory of God, don't do it. Amen. Amen. If you can't thank God for it, why do it? Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why I always thank God for the ice cream I eat. And the cookies. Everybody's like, how, how do you thank God for that stuff that's killing you? I don't care. Sure tastes good. Amen. I love ice cream. Amen. Uh, so anyway, he says, he, he says, verse 32, Give none offense neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles nor to the Church of God. Now, I don't know if anybody picked up on some doctrine there, did they? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, did anybody here pick up on a doctrine right there? Yeah. You may have went right past it. So we're going to bring that out. There's three types of... When God looks down, He sees three types of people. Okay? Now, there's actually two when it comes to judgment. What's that? You're either saved or lost, right? Mm -hmm. But out of the lost, He has two different types of people. Okay? He has, uh, he has uh, the Jews which were uh, the people of, you know, of promise the, from Abraham. And then what do you have? You have Gentiles. But did you notice there was a third one there? What's that? That's the church. And if you're saved, where are you at? You're in the church. This is the church of God. Uh, this building is just a representation of it at the invisible universal church of God. Anybody that's saved, Amen. And get that in your head. Why? There's a whole bunch of people that think when you get baptized, you're in the church. Uh-uh. The moment you got saved, you're in the church. Right. Amen? Water, it's only water. That's it. Indeed, John baptized with water. 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 It's only water. It does not put you in anything. It's, there's no supernatural thing that's going to happen. It may clean you up a little. That's about it. Amen? Amen. So, he says there's Jews, there's Gentiles, and there's the church of God. He says, give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church here. Do it all by the glory of God. Verse number 33, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but for the profit of many. That what? That many may be what? Saved. There's the most important thing in the end. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. What's that? How much? Let me ask you something. How many people here have family members that aren't saved? How much you care about them? That when something happens, you can actually step back for a second. Look, you can be a religious fanatic and stuff, and, I, and they'll think you are. You may not even be, but they think you are. And, and, and I want you to understand something. At the moment that uh, Larry or Mark or, or Bruce or myself or Rod or Isaac over here, the moment we got saved, you know what people thought when we started speaking? They always thought this, he got religion. 
You know, we, we haven't seen that guy for about 10 years. You remember that guy down on the block? You remember Bruce? He was a crazy kid on the block. You remember that kid? Oh, man, he was going around stealing from this guy. I mean, don't have, a, don't have that, that day when everybody puts their stuff out for the flea market because here comes Bruce. <laughs> Sorry, Bruce. I'm only, you're only in my story, okay? <laughs> Nobody's inviting Bruce to their house no more. I mean, come on. But... You see, he, Bruce was that guy before he was saved. Now Bruce comes back, he gets to his high school reunion, and they see a different guy he comes in, and all of a sudden he's talking different. And he's been speaking all different throughout the town. He's talking about Jesus, and he's talking about being born again. And his friends over there, they say, hey, look, bro, hey, look at Bruce. Hey, well, 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 Bruce, he speaks different. Uh, Bruce, he's, he's different. You know, on Sunday, Bruce is in church. What happened to Bruce? He got religion. <laughs> He just, he just got Jesus. He got born again. He, got, he has the love of God in him. He has a different aim now at his life. But see, they don't see that. What they're going to see is he got religion. What you need not to do is to show people that all you have is religion. That you have Christ. That, you know, uh, be as merciful to them as, they, as God was merciful to you. Amen. Do you understand that, that equitable balance? Could you imagine trying to forgive people as much as God forgave you? Imagine that, Miss Roxanne. Imagine that. I'm going to forgive people as much as God has forgiven me. And it's pretty reasonable, isn't it? Pretty reasonable. And it's pretty hard. You didn't get religion. What you got was you got God. Show God in your life. Be merciful to people. Uh, remember, you have the Ark of the Covenant. Okay? It's right here. You've got the law underneath, and that kills you. But right above that is the mercy seat. And it's above the law. What's that tell you? Mercy trumps the law. Rather to give mercy than to give doctrine. Rather to, rather to give mercy than to go around correcting. And if you're going to correct, do it with a little mercy. We're here to win people. We're not here to, to drive them. Look, uh, we're not here to, we're here to win people, not argue with them. If you're going to argue, please, if there are people that are in the church even, that are weak in faith, Please go to the next room and talk it out. Don't be a jerk that has to be always right. Look, debating is not a very good way of speaking. I'll tell you why. Has anybody here ever watched a debate on TV or watched a debate on YouTube? Let me ask you something. Who won? Yeah. What, did the other guy leave going, yep, you won, I'm out of here. I'm on your side now. When was that time? I didn't see that one. Has anybody seen it? What's that? Nobody wins a debate, people. All, you, all you're doing is it, it starts out as a, as a uh, even if it is, even if it is kindly done, in the end, it will not be as it escalates. Your best bet is to stop it. Just, just, have, just have a time. Okay. Okay, I'm done. You don't have to, look, it, it, this is some of, the, some of the gravest, this is what the world's going to say. We agree to disagree. I don't agree to disagree. I'm just done. I'm okay. Just get on out of there. Why? What they tell you? If you're going to fight and run away, you live the fight another day. But if you got yourself out of there and it was a bad situation, how many people are inviting you back in? If I come over to your house and I'm having an argument with, with Mark at his thing, you think I'm in there next week? Be smart about these things. And you say, well, where did you look? Look, there's some people in here that didn't even come to our church, but if I came, I, I walked in to talk to somebody, they said, hey, come on. Miss Adrian, I didn't, she didn't come to this church. She came twice. When her father was, when her father was going down, People had said, can you go over there and talk to my grandfather? Can you go over? I showed up. You know what she said? Come on in. You know why she said that? She went to another church. You know why she said that? I never had a bad time with her. I never beat her up. Uh, we're the best. In your Bible Baptist church, we got it going on here. You just don't understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
I, I want you to understand, we might not be the best church. There's that one in Messina may be better than me, the one down in Watertown, he may be better than me. Okay? That may be more conformable to you. I'm not saying the ones in between, believe me. <laughs> but what I'm saying to you is, you're going to learn a lot here. But I don't want you to take this and just start pounding people with it. Understand, you need mercy first to walk in. Because that same aggression that you will have when you get in with people will cause more tears when you're not there and you're off by yourself. You know who's unsaved in your family. You want them to get saved? Be smart about it. Don't let your pride be what controls you. Amen? All right, let's pray. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, for our time, and I thank you, Lord, for talking to us tonight, today. I thank you, Lord, for, uh, for the good people coming in, Lord Father. They have good hearts in here. I mean, Lord, they, they were in full agreement uh, with a lot of these things, Lord Father. And we know, Lord, that we've done these things in our lifetime, and we've hurt a lot of people. With, with our attitude and with our pride, Lord Father. Lord, we need your forgiveness and as a church even, Lord Father, that we will not be like this. We're not here to win the arguments, Lord God. We're here to win the people, Lord Father. We want to thank you for that right mindset in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 to, to get us towards identifying with you. And you were a merciful man. And we want to identify with you, Jesus, as a merciful person and one who cares, and just like Paul, we'll eat what's in front of us as long as they don't go any further and make us get into their religion. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us. Father, we thank you for being good to us. Uh, I notice everybody in here is saved today, so uh, we're go, we'll just go from there. We thank you and we love you, Lord. Let us be dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen.